Hello. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the Diels Alder reaction. This is the first in a short sequence of videos about this reaction, which is one of the more important pyrocyclic reactions out there. At its very simplest, the Diels Alder reaction is an addition reaction that occurs between two molecules, a diene and another molecule that contains a pi bond. And the product of this reaction is a cyclohexene. Make my look pretty for a minute. The two components of a Diels Older reaction are a diene, and then the other piece is called a dienophile, something that likes to react with the diene. Um, the outcome a six-membered ring, cyclohexene, uh, I'm just, is a really important uh, outcome and because we don't often see these things getting constructed, and so now we have a way to do so. And we form two new carbon-carbon bonds, which is pretty cool. If we were to look at, at this reaction from uh, a standpoint of you know thermodynamics on the reactant side we have one two three four sigma bonds and three pi bonds seven total covalent bonds If we look on the product side, I have six sigma bonds and three or one pi bond. Yes, and I, 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 whoops. Guys, I need to go back over here and fix my pi bones. Pi bond. Okay. So we're exchanging two, uh, two pi bonds for two sigma bonds. So that's really going to be the thermodynamic driving force for this reaction even though there maybe is an entropic penalty to play as you go from two molecules to one molecule. Here, coming up, is the, the general mechanism of this reaction. And this is a type of reaction called a pericyclic reaction. Uh, pericyclic means that there is a cyclic transition state. Uh, and this reaction is also concerted, meaning well, meaning that everything happens at the same time. Most chemists will actually draw this mechanism, uh, uh, or many chemists will draw the mechanism as I am about to. Uh, and so I just want to give you a sense of what is, is going on. That we are drawing arrows representing the rearranging of the pi bonds to form the sigma bonds. And what we're actually doing is trying to set up what our transition state's going to look like. I've created this lovely transition state. Here's my transition state. Draw back at brackets around my transition state. All of the uh, all of the dashed lines in my transition state diagram represent bonds that are partially broken or partially formed. Right? So chemists sometimes like to show this mechanism as indicating that the pi bond is going to go form a new sigma bond, and it's going to form a new sigma bond between these two, two carbon atoms here. But we often like to draw this arrow out into the space where that new bond is going to form to kind of uh, give a hint about this transition state. It's perfectly okay to, to not draw it that way. And, and in fact, many, uh, many, many types of software that are used for just copy and paste this. Many soft, many types of software that are used for, for drawing actually require you to take that arrow 
and end it somewhere uh, on a particular atom. Right. So I, I'm going to draw the mechanism as if we're doing that. Here we go. Right. Now, <clears throat> you might have come to the question of, well, why are you drawing your arrows counterclockwise? Why didn't you draw your arrows clockwise? That's a really good question. Uh, it turns out that the clockwise mechanism is also perfectly legitimate. You know, the direction of these arrows does not matter whether they are clockwise or counterclockwise. It does matter, however, where they start and end. You have to start all of your arrows at existing pi bonds. You can't start uh, an arrow at the, ex at the one existing single bond. Uh, because that would involve a different kind of, of transformation. And I'm not going to show it to you, but there's actually a perfectly valid uh, but six, six arrow single electron mechanism that someone might draw. Um, and it turns out from a paracyclic standpoint, these arrows, well, and like all arrows, but especially in this kind of reaction, these arrows are more for the user, for the, for the person looking at the reaction, than indicating exactly what's happening with the electrons. Since it's all concerted and all of the electron rearrangement is reorganization that's going on at once, it's hard, you know, it's there there really isn't this directionality. It's not it does not, you know, there the 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 cyclical nature of the transition state is to also help you understand that there's not a starting point and an ending point to this reaction. We have studied other concerted reactions where there is a clear starting point. There's a nucleophile that attacks. There's a leaving group that leaves, and, and, and the nuclear, you draw the nucleophile attack, the leaving group leaving. Even though they're both happening at the same time, it feels like without the nucleophile there, the leaving group might not just leave. So, so the nucleophile clearly is the starting point. In this case, with everything going on at once, it's not necessarily, uh, you know, it's not necessarily required that all everything be uh, together, or it's, it's, there's not a starting point. Like the dienophile is not the starting point, diene's not the starting point, there's not one alkene or another. So it doesn't matter whether you draw clockwise or counterclockwise. I do want to scroll back up here all the way to the top of the reaction and indicate though, that even though there is a thermodynamic driving force for this reaction, these reactions often require a lot of heat to them because while, uh, while the product is more stable than the combination of the reactants, the reaction is slow you know, and it has a, a high activation energy. And so we need some kinetic energy added to the system to get that going. In the next video, I wanna talk about the scope of this reaction relating to the dienophile. And then we'll talk about the scope relating to the diene. And then we will talk, and then I will talk to you uh, about some stereochemical issues. Thank you for watching.